Hey everybody, this is Alex Brissett from alexbrissettcoder.com with some more computer science uh, concepts and knowledge. And today we're gonna to be talking about design patterns. Now design patterns are a concept that got popularized by a book that oftentimes people just shorthand refer to as the Gang of Four book. Okay, really it was just four authors that decided to take the idea of design patterns and sort of like city planning and, you know, yeah, city planning or urban planning and then apply it to sort of object-oriented programming, saying, okay, there's different ways, there's different patterns for solving problems using objects. And kind of put all these design patterns into different categories. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, the different categories. So again, objects are sort of just templates for a series of properties and methods uh, that you may use in your programming. So in that case, I might have a, a bottle of water object. Okay, and the bottle of water will have a property of how much water is in it, so ounces. Um, it would have a function, open it, you know, to open it up. So that'd be a method where I would describe how to open up the bottle. And then I can create as many, once I create that object, that class, I can then instantiate or create as many individual bottles of water that I want. But knowing that I can do that in programming, now knowing that I can create objects, how can I take that to an advantage and create patterns that will help solve different problems in programming? And we divide these patterns up into three categories, creational, structural, and behavioral. Now, creational has to do with how we create objects. So like how, so a problem I have is every time I have to create a, another animal, I have to create every all these things from scratch. I have to redefine the leg property. I have to redefine to the, the sound proper, uh, sound method. You know, even though I know all animals make a sound, pigs go wink and cows go moo, I have to redefine this method every time. What is my solution? Okay, um, one one solution could be uh, something called like a factory method, and we'll go through all these individual design patterns. But the idea is you might create how what is the method we're going to use to create objects? So maybe we create that interface, that sort of template object for animal from which I can create cow, tiger, um, pig, create all these animals from that have all these properties and methods built in already, and that'll make it easier for me to create different versions, which for animals, conceptually it makes sense, but practicality, you're like, so when would I need that? You know, a good example is like, maybe you have different types of logistical operations that generally have the same sort of underlying structure, but shipping, you know, logis logistics of shipping by a boat are gonna be different than logistics by shipping by a truck. So you can create sort of a logistics interface object and then create different instances with the separate differences. Um, then there's structural um, design patterns, which are less about how do I create new objects, but creating objects that work together to create something. So in this case, if I were to break this down and create a bunch of separate objects, like this, the plastic bottle, the water as an object, and the cap as an object, and then basically use those three objects to assemble a bottle of water, that's another way I can kind of break down a problem and solve it by breaking it down into even smaller objects with properties and methods, and then take those objects and assemble a new object. So it's about building bigger things from smaller things, structural. Uh, behavioral has to do with sort of how does it interact? Uh, how, do do different, how do different objects affect each other's variables and whatnot? So in this case, this bottle of water, when I drink it, this bottle of water object is now interacting with the object of Alex. And basically now my property of thirst is going down. Okay, so this bottle of water has an effect on my thirst property. But now I have an effect on its level of water property. It has less water. So basically by defining how these different objects affect each other and how they can change each other's properties, how their methods affect each other, um, that's more of a behavioral design pattern and using Behavioral design patterns, you can solve problems by defining how objects work with each other. So again, how do we create the product? How do we create the object? Creational patterns. How do we use objects to create other objects? Structural patterns. And how do objects affect or interact with each other? Behavioral patterns. Now there's a lot of individual patterns within each of these categories that are used over and over again in different problem solving. And we'll go over those in different videos, but I just wanna introduce the concept here in this video. So you guys have a great day and enjoy.